David and the other psalmists were, were writing all these worship songs to God. But the interesting thing about the psalms is psalms is actually pretty well divided between psalms of lament and psalms of praise. And what that teaches me is that in good and bad times, worship is relevant. Worship to God is always relevant. When you're down, worship God. When you're happy, worship God. Because in each scenario, the worship of God is where you experience that joy. I mean, when do you really experience the joy? What, what are those times where you look at your life and say, you know, I feel really spiritually uplifted. You know, sometimes some of our people go down to lectureships or they go down to whatever and you're surrounded by thousands of people and you're all just singing praise, praise songs to God and after those praise sessions, you leave away saying, I feel completely spiritually encouraged. And it's like, why do you feel spiritually encouraged in those moments? It's because you, along with the other followers of God, with one heart and one mouth and one voice, are saying in agreement God is God, who sent his son to die on the cross. And because of that, we have eternal life and we worship him. I mean, that is a joyful message. And one of the things that we learn about David <coughs> is that that's how he renewed his joy. It seemed like even in his laments and even in his hard times, he would return to the idea and the concept of saying, you know what, I still praise God. My enemies may be coming upon me. I may be suffering the consequences of my sin. I may do all these different things, but God is still the Lord. And he has my worship. I thought about this and asked, how much do we worship God during the week? I mean, if we really want to emphasize worship, I mean, a renewal of spiritual rejuvenation, ask yourself, how much during the week did I just spend worshiping God? Because if it's very low, then we can understand, if I'm not putting God in the center of my life, then I can't be joyful because God is meant to and designed to be the focus of my life. If I'm not spending time with Him and remembering the redemptive act of Jesus Christ on the cross, how can I really rejoice in the grace that I've received? If I'm not taking time and dwelling on my heaven dwelling that Christ is preparing in God's own house in which I have a room in, then how can I take glory in my eternal life? I thought about this. Oftentimes, we often talk about coming to worship service. And that's true. We come to worship service on Sundays, right? <clears throat> but our worship service, let's say, is an hour. Okay. We often emphasize from the book of Revelation, Sunday's the Lord's Day, and that's true. But we don't even give the whole day to Him. In the first century, they spent a lot more time on Sunday together. But let's say we, we have our weekly hour, you, we come Sunday morning. And I thought, how much worship is that? Because one hour out of 168 hours that God has given us is about a half of 1%. Did you ever realize that? That if you just came on Sunday morning for worship service for one hour, you're only giving God one half of a percent of your weekly time. And then we wonder why we are spiritually drained, why we're not spiritually joyful. And in fact, we try to rush worship in order for us to go and glory in TV shows like The Walking Dead. And then we question ourselves saying, why am I spiritually feeling void? Because God desi designed us to have a longing and a desire that can only be fulfilled when we worship God. And so part of my thinking is, if we want to really spiritually rejuvenate ourselves and our faith and our joy and our zeal for God, what we need to do is increase the percentage of time given to God. You know, in our daily time, do you wake up in the morning and say, I want to worship God today. I want to wake up and sing songs to him. Today, I want to write songs to him. Maybe some of you guys are poets and you didn't even know it. You can write them down. Maybe we can even sing them. You know, one of the things that I'm getting excited about is seeing how some of those people, we're, we're known for our acapella singing. We, we, we love that acapella singing. We're great at it. And it's biblical. 
what I'm really excited about is seeing how some of our own members in, in the Church Universal is starting to write songs more. And we're starting to sing them in our congregations. And thinking, we should be doing that. Because when we wake up, we have reasons to write down words of praise. We have reason to glorify and worship God. And when I look at my own life, the times that I feel the most joyful in my faith is after I worship God. Not just worship service on Sunday, but sometimes I'll just be there singing God. Sun is shining through, I'm worshiping God. Night is closing out, praying to God. And some of those times are when I feel spiritually encouraged. I mean, a lot of times when people are in the collection and they're saying, you know what? You don't just have to just give your money, give your time. I, I think about that and say, okay, let's give more of our time. Let's give more of our time. Because a half of 1%. I mean, I think about that and I think, you know, this is something I want to repent of. Because and if I just came on a Sunday morning, 99.5% of my weekly time is Micah time. And I think, you know what, that's wrong. And that's a wrong ratio. And have you noticed the more we increase our time of worship during the week in our lives, when we wake up and we spend that time worshiping God, it's not surprising that our whole spiritual lives seem to accelerate. Isn't it amazing that even before Jesus went and was hung on a cross, the two things that he, the, well, a few things that he did was he spent time establishing the Lord's Supper, he sang hymns with his apostles, and he spent time in prayer. He was worshiping God before he went to the cross. How would I, how would I endure the hardest task given to me by God? Worship. Saying, it's all, wor wor it's all worth it because God is worth it. And when I think about that, I think this is where we need to start rejuvenating our faith. By focusing on God. Waking up and focusing on Him. And understanding what true worship is all about. You know, I talked about last week <clears throat> about being the church that God designed. And that's absolutely true. And, and we're family and so forth, and we love one another, and all the things that we talked about. But one of the things we see in Acts, the second chapter, is that they followed the apostles' doctrine, and they loved one another. And one of the things that I kept on thinking was, we reference ourselves being like the first century church. And oftentimes when we say that, we mean it in reference to doctrine. And that's true, we're good on doctrine. But then we also got to work on application. We, we follow the doctrine that God is worthy to be worshipped. Now we've got to follow up in the, the application of actually doing it. And when I think about the kind of worship that God desires, this is kind of what Jesus made known. I mean, how, how many of you have ever come to worship service feeling like, you know, I, I want to just check off the time, worship seems monotonous, it feels mechanical, and I just leave the doors not feeling really all that spiritually encouraged? If you've ever felt like that, maybe it's because we need a renewal of our worship. Not just how we go about doing things on Sunday morning, but just in our weekly lives. Because when we come to worship, God should own something. And that's our worship, our voices, our hearts. One of the things that we understand is God doesn't take any joy in empty worship. And in fact, we don't gain anything from empty worship either. And in fact, from my experience, when people have empty worship in their lives... They feel even emptier. And not only that, when they have empty worship throughout their week, it seems like when they come on Sunday mornings, the worship service is more of something that spiritually drains them than encourages them. This is why I think we need to change our way of thinking. This is why in the Bible, the word proskuneo is a word used in worship, which means kissing towards God or falling in prostrate um, position before God. You just want to honor and revere Him. Another worship word we see in the Bible, in our English translation, is the word latreo, which means we're paying service to God out of homage to Him. Both of them imply complete reverence to God. Our hearts are for God. Our service is for God. And every day when we think about that, we've got to have this proskuneo latreo of worship to God. But here is what Jesus says. Because what He's wanting is...